my kids has been in all different types of kindergartens in Norway. And in my 10 years living here, I noticed some pretty interesting things about all of them. In this video, I wanted to share with you important info about how to choose kindergartens in Norway and what you need to look after when you're choosing kindergarten for your baby. I think this video will be really helpful for moms who is maybe not familiar with childcare in Norway from before. And thank you for being here. My name is Maria and I live in Oslo, Norway for last 10 years. And I'm a mom of three boys with the force on the way. In this video, we will go over a few important steps, types of kindergartens that you can meet in Norway, and what you need to remember about certain types of kindergarten when you choose them, how to get a place in kindergarten based on your baby's birthday. In the end, I will share my personal experience and what type of kindergarten I personally prefer as the mom of almost four. So let's come to types of kindergarten in Norway. Uh, here we can divide it very simple by uh, owning form. And here we have communal and private kindergartens. You will see that there is uh, more types of kindergartens that you can filter out and that is ordinary kindergarten, so we'll say communal kindergartens. There is Bedriftsbarnhage. It's a kindergarten for people who own their own business and have their own company. There is Familia Barnhage, which is family kindergartens that that is a small kindergarten for very few kids. There is a student kindergarten, which is open for kids of students that is taking higher education. And as a special category, we can also put the, out there the kindergartens for kids with special needs and open kindergartens where you can come with your child and uh, socialize with other parents and with other kids if you still didn't get a spot in a normal kindergarten that you applied for. Now let's talk about what can be tricky and what you need to remember when you're choosing the kindergarten for your little baby or maybe not so little baby. So let's just divide these types of kindergarten in two because I'm gonna talk so much about Bedriftsbarnehage. Uh, company kindergartens is one of the forms for private kindergarten when you can, where you can leave your child as a business owner. Usually these kindergartens have depositum of two months. The payment for these kindergartens are usually bigger than in uh, other types of kindergartens. The rest of the kindergartens, so communal or private family kindergartens, student kindergartens, they all have the same price. So for now it's 3000 kroner for a spot for first child, but from August 2024, at least in Oslo, they decided to reduce this price uh, till 2000 kroner maximum, plus the food money. About food money, we can talk a little bit later. But I just want to emphasize that the price uh, should be in general the same no matter what type of kindergarten you choose. What you need to remember about communal kindergartens. Ordinary communal kindergartens usually are a bigger place where uh, you have at least four groups for the smaller kids. Maybe it's one for the smaller kids from one to three years old or two of them. And groups for the bigger children from three to six years old. Sometimes there is variation and maybe if the the kindergarten is big, they have capacity to keep one extra group of two till three years old babies as a transitioning between a small department and a big kids department. But from my experience, it's mostly a small kids department and a big kids department. In these kindergartens, as a rule, you're not getting any warm food served every day and there is uh, not so much subsidization, not so much budget from the state for the food making inside of kindergarten and also the price of food that you're paying together with the monthly price, uh, it's very small uh, compared to the prices of food for private kindergartens. Just to paint the picture, uh, in the communal kindergarten of my child I paid 200 kroners for a monthly or it's now they even reduce it for 110, 150 kroners a month for the food budget. And in private kindergarten, I was paying uh, 800, 850 kroner monthly on top of the price, but there was served warm food two times a day. And it's not just warm food like uh, pasta, it was ecological uh, dishes made by uh, chefs that they deliver to this kindergarten, uh, to this kindergarten every day. 
so yeah, here goes the first uh, big difference between communal and private kindergartens. That's the food. You need to think if the food is important for you. You need to think if you are ready to make lunch boxes for your kid every day. I will tell you that the communal kindergartens don't have, uh, usually it's two days in a week, uh, which is lunchbox free. Maybe none, maybe more. In my kindergarten it's two days and other three days I have to pack with my baby two lunch boxes because they are eating about 11.30, 11 and 2 o'clock after they wake up. For the older kids they also eat two times about 11.12 and 2 to 30. And so you need to understand that you will need to pack this food every day. So if you don't want or maybe you want uh, your child to have uh, warm dishes every day, two times a day, then I advise you to look towards the private kindergartens that offer this option. Also here you need to remember that second meal will be not always a warm food because when I was working as an assistant in private kindergarten we had of course uh, first meal prepared, it was warm meal prepared by uh, our private cook in the kitchen uh, every day for all the kids, but the second dish was usually the bread with fruits and uh, you're getting something on the bread. Also, they usually say that it's three times meals and what it means that there is also a breakfast. In many kindergartens you get the breakfast, but the breakfast again is a bread that gets smacked with some different pollock, with some different things that you can put on a bread like uh, bacon oost, shinke oost, so it's this kind of uh, tube cheese or the tube caviar or makreli tomat or lever postai, so that kind of things. Uh, it's served usually if you deliver your kid before 8 o'clock. So 8 o'clock this breakfast is done already and nobody will feed your child before 11.30. The separate type of the private kindergartens that I wanted to talk about, it's the family kindergartens. Usually it's the private kindergartens. I haven't seen that there is a communal kindergarten subsidized by state. That was the family kindergartens. And these kindergartens usually are very small places, can be a part of the house, of some private house in the suburbs, basically some little spaces or the first floor of some villa, yeah, just some extension for the house. So it's not big places usually, it's places for the small kids up to three years old mostly. And uh, there is usually not so many kids, maybe up to six, eight kids, and it should be many grown ups for these kids, so it uh, depends on what age of baby this kindergarten accept. There should be a certain amount of grown-ups because I had to go to work when a child was turning 10 months old. So we decided to choose the family kindergarten for him and it was absolutely amazing experience. There was six kids, there was four grown-ups. There should be one, at least one person with pedagogical uh, education, of course and it can be a few assistants together with him. But for each six kids, I think there should be at least one uh, person with pedagogical experience. I'm not sure, but I think that's about right. Of course, this type of kindergartens is uh, basically made for kids and to take the kids that are not walking themselves still. So from 10 months old, nine months old, I think earliest you can give your child to kindergarten is six months old or what I, at least what I've uh, seen, you can apply for a, spot from six months old and of course when they're such a little baby you always have a grown-up together with them to change the diapers to carry them to yeah basically feed them uh, it's required that for so for that for that amount of babies there is that amount of grown-ups and in my kindergarten it was six babies and four five grown-ups and that was an amazing experience because my kid was happy, was fed. You can give own food like milk, you can give milk, you can give uh, purees. Uh, so you basically pack everything what you want your kid to eat in these times while he's in kindergarten. They follow all the instructions of what you want them to do and how you, what, what is the feeding schedule, what is the sleeping schedule. Uh, there is basically not so many general rules that they follow, like a rhythm of the day. Of course, they try more or less, but uh, in general, they listen to you a lot and they try to make it as comfortable as possible for your baby. So now I can say a little bit about student kindergartens. You also can find it on the webpage of your municipality and filter it out if you want uh, to give your child to the student kindergarten. 
it's all in the name. Usually these kindergartens, they can take care of your kid when you're studying longer hours and they are also open on Saturdays in the times and periods when you need to study extra. As this kindergarten is private, they also take kids from six, eight months old. You need to see from the kindergarten to kindergarten. But in general, what the tendency I've seen is that uh, private kindergartens allow to take the kids from very young age, so early age, six months, eight months, and communal kindergartens are usually taking kids when you have a right for the spot. So from one year old or the months before your kid is turning one year. Last category of the kindergartens that you will find in this uh, municipal web pages is open kindergartens and that's not real kindergartens in some sense because it's free, it's just a kindergartens that is open for parents to attend together with their kids and for example if you didn't get the place in childcare in time or you want your kids to socialize before they actually get a spot in kindergarten, you can always visit these kindergartens and stay there together with your child while he or her is playing and uh, maybe making some social connections with other kids and parents. I also visited this a couple of times uh, while I was waiting for the place for my two years old when we moved to Norway. Uh, and as we all know, in Oslo it's pretty difficult to get a spot in the small kids group. Uh, but this we will take uh, later. I want to share with you a few things that I know about how you can get the spot and how you more effectively can move and wait for your spot. Uh, we were waiting for the spot in kindergarten and when he turned three he went to the big group already but uh, before that he was very active of course very social and I had to go somewhere with him and the playgrounds was not enough because when you go in the daytime there is no kids, there is no nobody and it was really hard to catch someone. So I was just going to open kindergartens in my area that I googled through the municipality page and that was great actually. These kindergartens are full of toys, it's a few different rooms and yeah in winter it's a very good option because you sit in warmth and yeah if your kid can play himself then basically you are just sitting there doing your stuff. So that was about it about the types of kindergartens and what you need to expect. Uh, we covered how much it cost. It cost three and soon 2,000 kroner plus the food money. Food money vary from the type of kindergarten, either it's private or communal. Also the company kindergartens, you pay more and they take the deposit. So that's a special category that stands a little bit outside. I suspect maybe the student kindergartens also take extra money, maybe, I don't know, if you want your child to attend on Saturdays when you have uh, times for passing your exams. But uh, this you need to check on the kindergarten info pages. One more thing I wanted to talk about is in communal and I think in private kindergarten also, they have departments that is called Luft uh, Abdeling and usually it's for kids from three years old but also for the small ones they have it and what it means this department is that kids are mostly outside every day they go outside they go on skis they go on uh, trips field trips and you pack food with the baby or they uh, make some food outside in the nature but this is kind of a nature kindergarten or nature departments of the kindergarten when I was applying for my kindergarten here uh, this communal kindergarten that my boy goes into, they actually have one department that is Luft uh, of Delling, which is required that the kids is outside a lot and they dress good. And when I was just moving here, I was reading about it and I'm like, oh my god, no way my boy is gonna be outside whole day, every day. It's cold, it's snow, it's winter, it's rain, it's wind. And I was like, no, I will wait for the spot in the normal department. <laughs> But actually, as I live here after 10 years, I can say that that's a pretty cool thing to have your kid in this kind of department. Maybe for Russian people like me, it's, uh, it's very strange because we used to have kindergartens. We used to have our kids sleeping in the kindergarten until they're six years old and that they have warm food three times a day. And here it was just so wild and I was like, oh, no way, how, how is it possible? It took me a long time to get used to the bread uh, food <laughs> for babies uh, from one year and up to six and that they are not eating any warm stuff, basically. I would say this uh, kind of departments that goes on the trip all the time, this, this air kindergartens and uh, nature kindergartens, they are 
this is a pretty good option for a super active kids that is tiring you home in the daytime after kindergarten so to get out the energy you know to get out all this satan within <laughs> Maybe the kids who doesn't have a good appetite home after kindergarten, they hope they want to eat because they've been on the fresh air whole day. So, and they are actually are not sitting just outside a whole day. They come inside and they do something inside in their little facilities also. Another thing, uh, what is very popular in Norway uh, in general is to put babies outside to sleep, no matter in what kindergarten you are, private, communal, whatever money you pay. <laughs> Uh, if your baby sleeps in the stroller, the stroller is gonna stand outside. Uh, no matter if it's wind, snow, rain, there is a rain cover, there is in summer there is a net for the mosquitoes. In winter there is a warm, warm winter bags and the lamp skin. So there you can see just a little face sticking out. So cute. <laughs> and uh, yeah, that's a normal tradition and I think it's super cool. Baby sleeping better, much better outside. As a person who worked in kindergarten, I personally can tell you they are super warm inside the sleeping bags. Uh, we are making sure that they are dressed good. There is a wool socks, double socks, a little shoes, uh, wool dresses. That is this winter bags and babies are sleeping so much better in the fresh air in general. Of course, when it's minus 20, nobody sticks these strollers outside outside we usually keep them uh in like in gang's party in the uh, entrance hallway so we also adapt to weather uh i think <laughs> mostly it's based on the grown-ups because there should be a grown-up outside uh with the babies sleeping or with the kids sleeping at all times and uh, it's very hard for grown-ups to be uh, outside in so such weather conditions when it's like minus 20 for example you have a dress on yourself but uh, you still get cold so uh, basically people change every half an hour if we cannot change or it's not enough personnel in the kindergarten then maybe it's just standing with the strollers in the hallway and there's someone sitting there watching them at all times of course i know that some kindergartens uh, also have a system uh, where the baby's sleeping on mattresses my two years old have it now he was sleeping in a stroller when he was one year old still but now when he's two, they are actually sleeping in a separate room. There is mattresses, if you imagine something for gymnastics, that's type of mattresses. And they're sleeping in the clothes, they're just laying there with the pillows and plaids. Uh, so yeah, very cozy. I will talk about it in the next video also more because I want to talk about all the essentials that you need for kindergarten basically and what is very useful to have for the babies of different age from perspective of mama four and uh, uh, from the perspective of the person who worked in kindergarten also. How to get a spot in kindergarten? If you, for example, moving in the middle of the year 